Hello, everybody, and welcome to the, uh, the stage three, week three episode of the Lean Toss-Up CDL betting podcast. Uh, I am your host, Robert Martin of Lean Toss-Up, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, uh, Ryan of CDL Metrics. Uh, how are you doing today, Brian? Um, what, are you, what are you looking forward to this weekend? Yeah, uh, I'm doing well. Uh, we have, again, 10 matches of COD to be played this weekend. We'll figure out the exact seeding for Major 3, which is always exciting. And I think this weekend, of all the the weeks leading up to a Major, this could be the most chaotic in terms of how teams are going to be seeded because the tiebreak scenarios are crazy. Um, and we'll go over them a little more in depth as we go through the matches. But... Um, Honestly, I, I'm super excited just for the fact that, like, I think every game this weekend is going to mean something. Uh, I could be wrong. We could get to Sunday and there's a game or two that maybe won't matter as much. But for the most part, all of these games are super crucial. So that's very, very exciting. And we're here to break it down and see who we like. Yeah, um, I, I'm really excited. There's a lot of really interesting matchups and storylines as we head into the last week of this. Um, although viewership has dropped. Um, yeah. <laughs> although it has dropped, though, but, like, honestly, we're still seeing some, like, really interesting games with some teams. Some teams, I think, have kind of packed it in, I think. Um, cough, cough, Paris. But, I mean, outside of Paris, I mean, we're still... It, it's really interesting, and there's a lot of value in some of these lines. Some teams have clear... are, like, clearly trending up some are trending down so it's there's a lot of value to be had in, in in some of these lines i think personally uh this week so we'll 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 have to see we'll start from that but one thing i will start with here though is some futures bets so obviously this week is the last week before the majors um in terms of the major you actually have and depending on the sports book you have uh you have the ability to bet on quite a few um things actually um they have not updated they have not updated the odds to win the major at all for a while so um me <laughs> being an idiot apparently i am like the second optic beat phase i immediately went on my sports book and immediately put uh money on optic texas to win the major and i think all oh, this line's gonna there's, there's no way this line's gonna be plus 175 they're gonna be like minus 120 um by tomorrow or an hour from now it is still plus 175 so that being said don't regret the bet at all Still fine, but guess what, guys? If you're listening to this podcast, you too can go have Optic at plus 175 to win the major. I actually do like that bet. I I don't know if Optic will win the major or not, but if you can get in at plus 175 now, and then and and again, we'll talk about a little bit about this. I'm sure you have some opinions on this too. If you get a like a team that's on a hot streak in the finals, for example, like and again, right now because the line right now is Phase plus 150, Optic plus 175. You can make a very strong argument because, like, functionally, this what this line implies is that Optic Texas is somehow an underdog against Phase in the, in the, in, the, in the finals, which I don't think is true. I kind of think that Optic would be the favorites in any grand final, and the fact that you're getting absolutely some, yeah, so you're yeah. getting value off yeah. that, and also it, 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 with that with that implied line like Optic plus one seventy five, Ultra seven hundred. Rocker 800, Subliners even 900, that's implying that you're going to have at least 3, 4 to 1 on Ultra or Rocker in a final, which is a, be which is a beautiful hedge. That just gives you a beautiful hedge opportunity where you just get to put down some free money. You get to put down some money and be like, cool, no matter no matter who wins this, I'm winning, right? I'm winning this, I'm winning this major no matter who's, I'm winning money no, at the end of this game no matter who wins, right? So what are, what are your thoughts on that? What are your... Um, what are your picks here for um for the, for the futures market before we get into into week three matchups? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The optic one is it just makes too much sense when a book doesn't move a number and a lot of things happen. Um, that's a good time to go in on whichever team won last week uh, or whichever teams won. Um, so yeah, in that case, it's optic. You're right. Optic shouldn't be favored against phase going into last week. I think. I don't remember for sure the head-to-head -head matchup who was favored phase or optic. It was very close, but this future line seemed to suggest that phase had either an easier path to like the one seed or two seed, or that phase would be slight favorites in a you know grand finals versus optic. Now that's obviously 
I mean, it's not the case because Optic continues to beat FaZe. Optic is 3-0 and so far, whereas FaZe is 2-1. and So Optic should have a better seed. That means more map veto advantages throughout the major, on and on and on. So yeah, Optic, Texas staying at plus 175 is clear value. I took that. It's, yeah, an easy pick because it hasn't moved because sometimes sports books get lazy and that's just kind of, I don't want to say free money for us, but free value, I guess I would say. So yeah, Optic at plus 175. If you're looking at the outright winners board, um, another team that had a really good week, Minnesota Rocker, they were already eight to one um, going into last week, which we didn't love. Um, now they're four and zero, oh, so they're locked into winners bracket. If they beat Atlanta Phase this weekend, very good chance they're the number one seed, if not the number two. Um, again, map vetoes play a huge role in the major. The high seed gets those. I don't. I still don't love Minnesota at eight to one. As crazy as that sounds, they have looked amazing um, in their last four matches. Let's not forget though. At the Pro-Am, they had Havoc in the lineup, and it did not look good whatsoever. So, you know, maybe some steady improvements. It, it takes time to get new rosters together sometimes. That that honeymoon period, maybe it didn't click for them right away, but now it's starting to come into form. So, I mean, if you're going to take Rocker 8-1, to one, I don't hate it. I would rather just take them to reach the final at plus 350. Um, again, we're talking about those teams that aren't Atlanta or Optic, for the most part, I like them to reach the final. I do see more value in just them reaching the final because um, there's a path where, you know, they don't have to play an optic or a phase until the final in some cases. Uh, so that would be interesting. Uh, otherwise, another outright winner that I don't hate, but I took there just to reach the final number, Seattle Surge. Uh, so they're two and one so far with two basically coin flip matches this weekend quick math on that they should probably have three wins by the end of this weekend a really good weekend gets them four and you love that even more and even if they lose both there's a crazy scenario where there's a huge like four five maybe six way tie between teams that are two and three so i I don't even think like a an zero and two weekend for seattle bounces them out of winner's bracket necessarily so Seattle Surge are 16 to 1 to win outright. They're plus 750 to reach the final. Again, I like the reach the final number a little better. And then besides that, I don't love a lot else um, further down the board. Uh, like Breach and Mutineers are both 20 to 1 to win, uh, 9 to 1 to reach the final. I think both. Maybe just one of those teams will stay in winner's bracket. I think more likely it's both of them, even though I believe they play each other this weekend. Um, but like those numbers are close enough to Seattle's like 16 to 1 and plus 750 that I'd rather just take Seattle because they're a surefire, almost locked to make winner's bracket. Um, and then, yeah, like LA Gorillas are almost assuredly in loser's bracket. Paris Legion will be. Um, and their numbers are horrible, and they're not great teams anyway. Although we did see LA Gorillas rattle off six in a row to win Major 2, so anything's possible. But with that being said, favorite teams, um, Optic in the outright winner market, and Minnesota and Seattle in the to-reach-the-final market. Yeah, that's... I think those are some interesting bets. For Seattle, I, I don't know. I just... I have a hard time putting that on there, right? Like, personally, like, I mean, even the plus 750 to, to reach the final here, uh, it's it's hard. I'm not going to lie. Like, I mean, there, there's a scenario, though, where, like, say they're the four seed, right? Like, they if they win, you know, like, three of their first four matches, I think that means they're in the final. As crazy as that sounds, and... and you're, you're kind of hoping, right, that they avoid those top teams, which they might not be able to if, right, if they're the four or five seed, they're going to have to play the one seed. And, you know, like th- that could be phase or I got, that could be optic. It could be a rocker team, though, that although is like they're hot, they're beatable for sure. So I get it with Seattle. They're a middle of the pack team. It's just right now they're they're kind of the clear should be in winner's bracket. They don't look horrible. 
so you're just kind of hoping for an LAG type run and they don't even have to do what LAG did in major 2 if if they do just most of what LAG did then they should get to the final at least so it's that's the argument but i get yeah. it if you don't like it i mean no i i understand the logic behind it but it's just that like i mean what i think a week ago we were talking about a team change in seattle and like and now we're i mean again we do this with seattle and florida all the time i do like someone else i i i do not hate rocker to reach the final or even i mean we're gonna talk about ultra a little bit because they're the first game up so i'll talk about ultra i don't hate ultra to, to reach the final i'll tell you why when we talk about ultra but I don't hate Rocker. I mean, the thing of it is, let's imagine that the path forward, obviously, is to say Optic is the first seed. Phase is maybe the second, maybe the third. If if all if Minnesota beat them, I have no idea who would actually be the first seed. So I I don't I don't know how that math works. And to be honest, it's so complex that I don't really care. So I'll just you tell me when 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 the, when, when it's over and and on 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 Sunday afternoon they'll tell me who the seeds are and then I'll punch into my model. We'll go from there. So I it, they've made this ridiculously complicated. I have no idea who the, I, I, Minnesota Minnesota could actually be the top seed in that case. I don't even know. But basically. If it's min, if you'd have like Optic One, Minnesota Two, Phase Three, I guess Ultra is actually looking pretty good too. Then they'd be about the four or so, Seattle as well. Um, I mean at that point Minnesota to get to the final, like they'd have like I think Minnesota and, and Optic are on a collision course. And again, it's stupid that they don't play in the group stage, but that's just because we have a horrible group stage format. But I. Optic and Optic and Minnesota and Optic and Toronto are on a collision course here, and I think the I think the I I here, I'm calling this now and I could be wrong. I think that the I think personally that the winners bracket final match is between Optic and, and Rocker, and I think Rocker win it. I know that sounds crazy, but like this, I'm really high on this Rocker team. They they look they look really good. They look like they've actually really figured it out. And we've always said this about this Rocker team, right? We've said Standy is good. We've said Attach is good. We've said Priesta is good. And we've always said like, okay, Major Maniac. And obviously before we wanted them to replace Major Maniac with a better AR, but apparently that's just Priesta. If you make Priesta the main AR, then everybody everything else falls into place. And you get Havoc, who's an amazing SMG to pair with Standy, and then you get Attach in the kind of flex role. Like I just I really like this Minnesota team. And I with Ultra, obviously we'll talk about them in a second. But I don't know. I I don't love Surge, but I definitely love Minnesota. I I love Minnesota to reach the final, and maybe even Toronto too. But you're getting a better price on Minnesota, so I'd probably take that one as well. Um, no major two MVP yet, or no no major three MVP, um, which would be kind of interesting. And then no real change in Rookie of the Year. I Capsital is still the is still the favorite. I don't know about that. Maybe look at Sibit plus two fifty, but I don't know. I mean, like the thing of it is, when you look at the standings, and and maybe we'll talk a bit about that. Um, I guess we could talk a bit about that now if we want, um, because people are talking about New York, and they're like, "Oh, New York's in trouble." I don't, I don't feel like they are. Um, yeah, they only have sixty points. God, Paris has twenty points. That's horrible. New York only has. I mean, just looking yeah, at Paris, this, Paris has twenty points. I I remember at least one. Right, they beat Seattle at major yep. one, and then I'm trying to think of their other win. Uh, that might not. That one might not have counted for points. To be honest with you, did Paris beat Florida at? Some I know point Paris beat year? Toronto in in a in a league match. I that might have been. Oh, during stage two. It had to have been during stage. Yeah, two, it was during stage two. Paris's only win in major one was at the major. That might that that because like that's the loser bracket round one. You may not get points for that. They might Paris not had give... a good pro am. Let's not forget that. Yeah, which <laughs> counts for counts for no points as well. Yeah, they actually won yeah, their group at to... twelve to one under. You're right. Paris beat Toronto. Yep, that was a, a stage two match. They took them out in five games. Yes, I I would remember that as the they won the game fan. four by two points on Tuscan and then won the Bocage Search and Destroy to win it. Yes. Yeah, that was crazy. I forgot about that. That match was yeah. We we forget about that match and then that's that's fine. I think we should forget about that match. But as an ultra fan, but no, I mean, 
Oh, so the Niners are at 60 points, and people are like, oh, they might miss a chance, they might miss a chance. Well, they're only 20 points back from Thieves in 8th eight eight place, and then 30 points back from Surge. Subliners, um, they're not in the greatest shape for this major, but if you go on a relatively deep loser's bracket run, which, again, you have a great shot here, you're going to have a shot at Florida, at Thieves, at potentially Seattle. You're going to have LAG potentially in loser's bracket, London in the loser's bracket. Like A lot of teams in loser's bracket are not particular. Like, I'd take subliners over them and they will be heavy favorites like it's not going to be hard for for subliners to rattle off like four wins here in this bracket potentially even more and then all of a sudden then you're starting major four in in eighth place or so like you're maybe starting in seventh or eighth place at which point then you you have all of your your games which again their schedule this stage was really tough they had phase and optic um they have they have optic next time but after that the schedule gets a lot easier for them so i think I think subliners will be fine, but that being said, for teams I am actually worried about, I'd actually be like vaguely worried for Gorilla, for LAG. Um, they only have 125 points, which seems like a lot, but that's only 45 more points in eighth place. And again, you're going to have like Ultra could be looking to go on a run here. Subliners could be looking to go on a run here. Surge potentially too. Rocker as well. Rocker's just 30 points behind them. I I'd be worried about them, and I think I think Ravens have enough. They've still got a, a fifteen point edge over LAG, but like Ravens breach potentially could be faltering a little bit. Like I think I think pretty much Phase and Optic have locked in a spot. I don't know. There's probably some sort of we ran the math last year, but I just haven't run the math yet. Maybe I'll run the math in in a week or so because I know Phase clinched champs like midway through stage four. Um, but like I think. I worry about some of these teams that are like, I worry about LAG making champs. And I worry about Seattle and Thieves and Florida, and but not so much subliners. And, and I still worry about Ultra as well. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think that, um, do you think that like some of those teams that are currently in champ, like, do you think this is, this field is set for champs or are you really concerned about some of these teams not making champs? Yeah. So um, we can focus on New York specifically if you want. Um, yeah, I am worried about that. I was worried last week or two weeks ago about New York, uh, just seeing their schedule this stage. It looked hard. It has been hard. And they get to close it out versus Optic, who is the best team in the game. Um, so they're looking at a two and three, you know, finish to the stage most likely. So part of why I am worried is because two and three probably means your loser's bracket in this stage it might not be and new york have actually done a good job winning maps or winning matches quickly i should say so new york so far they're two and two on the stage um totally fine uh they beat paris in a sweep last week they lost to toronto in five maps um to end the week that one hurt, but it's still it's a loss in five maps, and map count does matter. Head-to-head tiebreakers matter more, but because we're going to have a lot of teams that are all tied together, map record is going to come into play. So a, 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 a win in three, a loss in five, if we backtrack, um, they beat Boston in four the week prior, and they lost to Atlanta in four. So that's a dead-even split um for that week so four and four through week one then you add three map wins in paris that's seven and four and then the two three loss makes them nine and seven map count for this stage so you're looking at a two and two team with a positive map record with a likely loss coming but again other teams are going to be two and three if that map record comes into play you know, if New York can get even just like one map off of Optic this weekend, I think that'll help quite a bit. Um, the sweep worries me. Uh, then you put yourself in jeopardy if you're, you know, nine and ten now. But I don't know. I'm I I am optimistic slightly that New York will sneak into the winners bracket even with a loss. Um, just with how crazy these scenarios could play out, and they are. Still a, a team that's trending up, I would say. Uh, we saw the Pro-Am. That was fantastic. Uh, and then a 2-2 two and two start to this stage so far is fine. Like, it, I think it's what you'd expect through four matches. Um, but the thing that worries me is, like, you're right. There are only a couple, you know, map win, or I should say match wins 
you know, behind the eighth seed at this point. So if you get hot, you know, you have a good major, you could vault yourself up into the top eight just like that. And now you just have to have an okay stage four and you're, you know, setting up for champs. But the thing is, like, I don't think of New York as this team that's, like, far and away better than any of the teams that are above them, right? Like, you talked about Florida and, and you know, Minnesota's red hot. And there's, I mean, Boston and London. So here's the weird thing, right, is that, like, Boston and London are very far up the standings, but they're sliding a little bit. So it's like any ground New York is going to gain it's not going to be on those teams that are slide. I mean, they will gain ground on those teams that are sliding maybe, but if the teams right ahead of them are still, you know, knocking off a match here, a match there, they're all kind of vulturing each other. Like New York could still be the odd man out at the end of the day. If just all these teams in the middle are getting a map win, getting a map loss, getting a map win, like that 20 points might matter, right? If, if everyone's going win, loss, win, loss until the end of the year. So if New York start in loser's bracket, which is very possible, then I'm really, really worried, right? Because you start in loser's bracket, say, I don't know, you know, a Florida or a Boston or a London comes down to play you, and you lose that first match, you're getting no CDL points, you would have earned 20 in the stage. Meanwhile, you know, at two, three, four of the teams that are ahead of you you know, just barely in the standings are getting an extra 10, 20, 30 points, maybe more, then I'd be really worried. So how New York seed uh, goes into the major three, like what they're seeded as, I think matters a ton. Um, but yeah, you're right. If, if they get hot, if some other teams start to slide and New York continues to show that they're an improving team, they should be okay. But the problem is you have to dig up, right? Like you, you have to hope that a couple teams in front of you start to keep sliding, um, maybe make some roster moves that don't work out and just keep dropping match after match. So you need a little bit of help, but it is possible. So <laughs> that's my long answer of I am worried about New York, but I'm also not too worried. We really got to wait and see how this final weekend plays out and how the major plays out yeah i i think i think yeah and as kind of as you're saying i think there is misplaced worried about new york when in actuality you should be much more worried about florida or thieves like if thieves don't make champs i mean again remember this the east team was super hyped this year right this was the year this was we they made champs last year with 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 a sub right because they decided to substitute out hook for for john right like and that team was like a shambles and they made champs this year if you you spend all the money you got envoy and, and you've got um octane and 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 you don't even make champs just ouch <laughs> right I, I think that's the that's the, the correct yeah. phrase there ouch um yeah but all right enough about uh, about the about us talking about futures and, and and champs, let's talk about the matches here. So, first up on Friday night, Friday afternoon, sorry, Paris versus Toronto. Paris plus one and a half, plus one fifty. Toronto minus one and a half, minus two hundred. Paris on the money line plus three hundred. Ultra minus four four thirty five. Over three and a half, minus two hundred five. Under three and a half, plus one fifty five. That's on Bovada, uh, on Bo or Bodog, depending on which region you're in. Um, so I actually, the second I saw this line, I immediately grabbed Ultra minus two and a half at plus two hundred, and I immediately grabbed Ultra um, minus one and a half maps in the uh, or rounds in in Search and Destroy, uh, like plus one ten. That's come down already on on Bovada here. Uh, I got I grabbed those on Bet three six five. Now it's down to minus one hundred five on that, and you can get. Um, ultra minus two and a half plus one eighty, so about the same. It's only slightly different. Um, but I like this this Paris team, man. <laughs> this, this Paris team, it's just, uh, it's, I I mean, like it's weird. They'll do random things, right? Like they'll do randomly good things. They'll have good moments when they like when they somehow win their group at the uh, kickoff at the at the uh, at the Pro Am Classic. And then they'll have weeks like last week when it's just like, and again, they came close against LAG, but like they just got, they got blown out 
badly by the subliners. And again, I think this is a classic. What Ultra loves to do is Ultra loves to beat up bad teams. And I think this is a classic match of Ultra coming in and they're, they're just going to 3-0 them. Now, so I, that's why I've got, I, I might throw the minus one and a half. I don't particularly want to lay minus 200 on that. I might throw that in a parlay or something. We'll see. Maybe bet a little bit on some of the other spreads. We'll have to see. But the, my point about Ultra, and I think I'll make a, a point about Ultra here, is that Alt, obviously with Ultra here, um, last week they um, Insight had food poisoning and was replaced last second by Scrappy. And Scrappy was amazing, and they beat uh, the Subliners, who they lost to in the pro Classic. Um, I think... And now again, we have not heard any confirmation either way of this. Either way. Could go either way. I I think Scrappy should be playing this weekend. I think Scrappy should be playing this game and Scrappy should be playing um, their other game this weekend. And I think specifically for Insight too. Uh, Insight has dropped off a little bit. His his If you look at his, at his past stats in the last couple of weeks, his engagements have dropped off a lot. And again, he's still, it's not like he's not particularly plus. Like he, he's, he's usually plus or about even. He had a couple rough matches, but he's mostly even. But his engagements have dropped off. And and what's the one good thing you can say about, like, well, obviously you can say a lot of good things about Scrappy, but what's the one big thing that whenever you see a Scrappy stat line six off the page, he's always, like, 32 and 28. Or, like, 32 and 18. Like, he's always getting, like, 30-some-odd kills a match. And I and the thing is, when you watch that game, and I've rewatched that game, you you just come away from it thinking that this ultra team was different. And I think one of the things they've missed is they've missed insight being able to run around the map. Like obviously insight didn't have to do this in cold war. Cause it's a much slower paced game, but in, in, at least in, in Vanguard insight is not running around the map, killing people. And I think he's at least he's not, he's not taking nearly as many engagements as scrappy was taking. And I think they've really missed that. I think if you have scrappy out there killing a lot of people, then it basically leads to less people. So then you get, Cammy gets to go one-on-one. For, like, Cammy can challenge a 1v2 instead of having to challenge a 1v3, right? And he he can win that 1v2. But if Scrappy didn't kill the third guy, then all of a sudden it's a 1v3 and Cammy gets killed, right? Or same thing as Kleenex. Like, look, Kleenex had an amazing weekend because he was just, again, when you're just dealing with less people on the map, you could do a lot more. And Insight was just not able to keep up the tempo. And in my opinion... I think they should play this, and, and I'll, I'll ask your thoughts on it for one second, but I'll make this point. I think this is a really telling point, is that I was thinking about this. Now, again, I we don't know what will happen in the major, and again, depending on who Ultra plays or, or whatever, they could play um, any team, really. But I was thinking, so next in the next in the next stage, week one of stage four, um, Ultra plays phase again. If it's in, if, if Insight is playing, if it's if it's Insight, Kami, Kleenex, Bands, I'm betting phase. I'd, I'd have phase, phase minus one and a half, whatever. If it's scrappy, I'm betting ultra spread and money line. And I think that's telling, right? And I, I, I'd ask you the same question. Do you agree with that? Like, if it's scrappy, are you betting... If, if, if ultra's playing phase, or optic even, it's, if it's scrappy or insight, if it's, if it's insight, are you betting on any against either, either against phase or optic right are you betting on them if it's scrappy or are you or are you betting on or are you not are you betting against them with ins- like are you betting against them if it's insight or betting on them with scrappy same as me or do you do you disagree with that sentiment what's your thoughts on that yeah um i don't disagree right and so this bands kleenex cami insight roster that we've seen for you know almost two full years now they're like I want to say they're like one and eight versus this Atlanta roster in cold war. We all remember Toronto beat Atlanta at major two. It was fantastic, you know, cause everyone thought Atlanta wasn't going to lose another match the rest of the year. And then Toronto kind of come out of nowhere and take them out. But I want to say they played like seven other times last year and never beat Atlanta once they came close a handful of times and they didn't a handful of times. And this year, I think, has been the same. I, I don't think Toronto's taken out Atlanta yet. So I like your point with, yeah, if it's insight, it's going to be more of the same, and Atlanta's going to win, and that's just how it is. I do want to see how Atlanta is playing at that time. Um, now, that could affect prices, obviously, if Atlanta is coming off a major three win. You know, and, and Toronto is looking not so good with the same roster, with the new roster. Like, there's a lot that goes into it more than just, like, if Insight is in or Scrappy is in. But I think your your general logic of, like, I need a different roster because that roster 
has unknowns and unknowns are good when you're taking an underdog, right? Like the other team can't prepare quite as well for you because if this new guy is a much faster pace than insight, that changes kind of how the whole team moves around the map. And, you know, maybe he doesn't have the same gun skill as insight. Maybe he has just as good of gun skill. Maybe he has better gun skill than insight. Insight's gun skill is still very, very good. He's not quite as efficient as he was last year in Cold War. Uh, like, his search and destroy numbers in Cold War were just unreal. He's still very good this year in search. Hardpoint, he's solid. Control's been a little iffy, but still okay. Um, but yeah, if if Scrappy brings a new dimension to the team that is helpful to, you know, at least two of the three other players, then this Toronto team is better. And is it enough to take out a phase? Probably not. I'd still have phase probably favored in that match, you know, unless a phase just bomb out this major and Toronto shows something. I, I just can't imagine that phase would be underdogs, but Toronto might be a value at that time. If that roster move is made, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, again, I think that, I think that team change was definitely considered for this team. I just don't think they they ended up pulling the trigger on it. And I think that's part of the problem. I think that they definitely considered it and and again, like Scrappy showed what this team can be. And to be fair, it's not you can't just blame it on Inside. I think Inside is a great player. I think Inside has a great future. Um we have I think in a lot of cases we have we have to kind of figure out, like, it's hard to figure out, like, the best way, place to move a player or to, to change up something, right? And I think for them, it's it's a hard decision, right? I mean, obviously, Insight's been a, a guy you've you've had, you've worked, like, Insight's been a, a player on the team, right? They've worked well with him for a long time, and, and that's it. But at the same time, this is an organization, right? This isn't a best friend group, right? This is an organization that's trying to comp- play competitively and win, right? And I think that at a certain point you have to just say no okay we are better with this we are better with scrappy than we are with insight we have to do that and i i think that for and again we'll have to see what, what marky b does and i'm really interested to see and i i really hope we see that the tweet that says scrappy is playing in place of insight this week if we do that i am immediately betting ultra to win uh, the stage three major and i'm betting ultra to win champs immediately because i think they can I I think that that is the spark that this team needs. And you make a good point about Ultra against FaZe, right? I mean, again, obviously, you can make a case that Optic's the best team in the game at this exact moment. I think that's true. But at the same point in time, FaZe has been the benchmark for the last two years, basically. FaZe is the benchmark, and they're 1-8. I think they did beat FaZe one other time, I think. But I'm not sure. Oh, no, never mind. This I'm year? thinking. No, 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 no. You're right. In the last two years, you're right. They are 1-8. I was thinking that the, the only other time they beat FaZe was in the Toronto Ultra Home Series in in in, in, in Modern Warfare. That's the only other time yeah. they ever beat FaZe. You're right. My bad. So that's, yeah. So they, that, but that's, you're right. That's the only time they've ever beaten. Which is crazy because we yeah. think of Toronto as this, like, oh, last year they were neck and neck with FaZe. But, like, no. Like, FaZe was that good. But. Um, yeah, Toronto's still a very good organization. Having a lot of good players is a good problem to have. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, trying to really figure that out. And and maybe Toronto plays Paris this weekend with insight and and they struggle to a point. I'm not saying they're they'll lose, they could, but you know, maybe they just they don't see it the same and go, you know what? This scrappy guy needs to be the guy in. Um so We'll see how it plays out. It's the first match um, of the weekend, Paris and Toronto. Um, you know, in terms of the odds, you mentioned it earlier. I think it's the one way I would consider playing this match would be like Toronto search and destroy spread because, right, I I don't know why, but every time this specific match comes up or just any time it's like Paris's last match of the stage and it's versus a half-decent team, I'm always like, well, the half decent team has something to play for. Paris has nothing to play for, right? Paris are 0 4 so far, if I'm correct. Yeah, they're 0 4 in the stage, so locked into losers bracket. Good luck, have fun in there. Toronto are still fighting. Toronto, in theory, I think could be the two seed at the highest um, if they win both their matches. If Rocker loses, if Optic loses a little bit, so 
it's not out of the question that they could be as high as the two seed. Um, a win over Paris is needed for that to happen. Um, but I, I do wonder, right, are Toronto maybe going to try out their not-so-good maps on Paris to see if they can improve at those in some way? You know, we saw, I remember, a Paris-Atlanta match in Stage 1. That was much the same. Uh, it took Atlanta five maps to take out Paris, in part because they played on Atlanta's worst maps. So Paris was able to take out a couple of those and, and force the game five. This could go the distance if that sort of thing happens again. But I think with Search and Destroy, Toronto, like there's no map that I'm worried about with Toronto. I know Toronto's a good Search and Destroy team. I know Paris is horrible. So like the game two spread, I don't mind that whatsoever. But touching the money line, the minus one and a half, I'm a little scared to do. Um, and honestly, of all the matches this weekend, this might be the least entertaining uh, just because Paris is involved and that tends to be how those go. So that's what I'll say. I like the search and destroy spread. Other than that, I'm wary. You can make a case for either, right? Paris have nothing to lose. So they might just come out and get a good map set and, you know, look okay because they're relaxed. But uh, and Toronto's playing with insight, and maybe that lineup's not as good. On the flip side, Toronto are playing for something, and Paris is Paris. So yeah, yeah, we, I think we can get to the next match. Though. Yeah, we spent <laughs> we spent a lot of time on Toronto, and uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm hoping for for Scrappy this weekend. Let's let's see if we get if I get that or not. If I am gonna be very happy. Surge versus Florida. So this is actually this is actually another very interesting match too. Surge minus one and a half plus one thirty. Florida plus one and a half minus one seventy. Surge on the money line minus one sixty five. Florida plus one twenty five. Seattle uh, so over four and a half plus one sixty under four and a half maps minus two ten. So this was kind of interesting. So I didn't. Uh, I'll say this story. I, I basically, before, so the lines for this didn't come live until earlier today on, on Tuesday, so they, they weren't there for all of Monday, which actually now I'm realizing it was the Victoria Day long weekend, so, or the, the May 2-4 weekend or whatever, it's kind of a holiday in Canada, which it might actually be a holiday in, in the UK too, which was why the UK books didn't release lines. Okay, now that makes a lot more sense. So, but no, so um they had, when... I, the lines weren't out. So basically, I, I hadn't updated my model yet on Sunday night. So I was trying to figure out like what I would put, peg these lines at. And this line, I said, I'm going to have this even. I bet Seattle if this is even, and I think there'll be money coming in on Florida. So then this line goes live last night, like super late. I see it at first. It's Seattle minus 138. I take a bite of that. I'm like, cool, I'm just going to bet a little money line on this. And I'm like, oh, this probably come back to Florida, and I'll buy back in. Well, somehow it's moved towards Seattle. And I am not confident at all. Like, I might get out of this. I might actually bet on end up betting on Florida here. This Seattle team, like, it's just I don't know. Like, I don't know why the money's coming in on Seattle here. The Seattle we were talking a couple weeks ago about a team change here for Seattle. Like, Seattle could win this game, but like, I'm looking at this Florida plus one and a half. Like, I mean, Florida's inconsistent, yes, but like, Florida hasn't really done anything to make me think that Seattle's better than them. I mean, they lost to Minnesota, but like. I actually kind of think Minnesota's a good team. Florida lost yeah. to, to Optic. Optic's a really good team. Like I don't, I don't understand why we all think Florida is horrible. Although my model does have Seattle about a sixty percent favorite. I don't know. I I might put a little bit on Florida here. Um, I I just I don't know. My model does have surge here though. But like about basically, I have this line even. And if we st if we see more surge money. In the next couple of days, like if we see surge get up to minus two hundred, and we get Florida up to plus two hundred or so, I'm I'm gonna be pulling the trigger on Florida. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Do you do you agree with this line, or do you think that that this should be closer to even? What do you think? Yeah, no. So I talked about it a lot last week, and I'll say it again with this match specifically, and with some others for Saturday and Sunday. A lot of these teams are very very close to one another in terms of power just how good they are at this game these two teams count as that team or that they're in the same tier right they're in the middle some days they're good some days they're not i don't know if it's going to be a good day for seattle or a good day for florida i do know that florida's plus 125 on the money line and minus 170 to get to a map five the plus one and a half at minus 170 for florida is very, very good in my opinion. I have this as actually a Florida favored 52%, Seattle 48% game. Now, if we take 
recent results into account, maybe that's closer to a true 50-50, if not a slight favorite to Seattle. But I think this game is definitely within the, the 48 to 52 range in terms of win probability. So with all that being said, yeah, Florida is a value. Um, I'm surprised you aren't super sure why money's coming in on Seattle. It's because of what we just saw like last week, right? Seattle is uh, two and one in the stage so far. And Florida is one and two. Like, it's a one game difference, but Seattle's won two of their three and Florida's won one. So that's what's going into it. So I, I get the move. I just think, yeah, the, the price is a little too high on Seattle. And yeah, the Florida to cover a map and a half is great. Not only do I have them as a slight favorite, but if Florida wins, right, it's going to be in four maps most likely. Florida is a better hard point team. Seattle's been better. No doubt, but Florida is still, I think, a better hard point team. And Seattle, I think, is a superior search and destroy team. So if it's a Florida win, I see it in four. If it's a Seattle win, I see it in five. Either way, Florida covers that. Now, the thing with Florida, right, that we talk about a lot is they might come out and just get swept because Florida does that sometimes. On the flip side, they might come out and get a sweep. Again, it's really hard to try to figure out which way it's going to go, but I do know Florida's the underdog, so that's the side I'm going with. And I'm I'm willing to lay the minus 170. I'm not usually one to lay juice like that, but when it makes this much sense, I, I don't mind it at all. So Florida Mutineers in the battle of the nautical teams, I'll take uh, Florida. But like, yeah, a Seattle win is very, very possible, like, it's hard to figure these things out, but I see a little bit of value on the underdog, as I will with just about every coin toss game we talk about. Yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna see. I'm excited for this game, but yeah, Me if too. if Florida gets higher than this, if we start seeing Florida 150, Florida 175, Florida 200, yeah, I'm, I'm jumping at that. That's that's too that's too high for Florida. Now, this is, I think, one of, one of the better matchups of the weekend. Actually, probably the best matchup of the weekend, to be honest. Rocker versus FaZe. Rocker plus 1.5, plus 105. FaZe minus 1.5, minus 135. Rocker on the money line, plus 195. FaZe minus 260. Uh, over 3.5, minus 285. Under 3.5, plus 210. I love Rocker in this. I've got this as about FaZe 55%, so you're very clearly getting value on rocker at plus one at, at plus 200 functionally it's actually plus 200 already in bet 365 i i love rocker in this i actually think this rocker team is legit we've talked a lot about this rocker team before and how they needed to major maniac was the problem there and they they got moved him and the thing is i thought we were concerned that priest was going to struggle in that role because he's been struggling all year but he's actually done amazingly well this year and i think that uh, you know, he's, he's he's done amazingly well in the in this since he's replaced as he's since he's replaced um, Major Maniac as the main AR, and like Havoc is just doing his job. He's doing amazing. He's getting kills. He's doing great complement to Standy and Attach is great as a, as an as an AR flex. And I just I love this team and this Phase team is just. I don't know what's wrong with them. They just seem to struggle against the top teams. And it's quite possible that FaZe has just been like this technically sound team that's just been able to beat up on, on worse teams for the last, basically since the entire start of the CDL functionally. And that's very possible. But at the same point, I just, like, I, I, I think this Rocker team is really legit. This is more a bet on Rocker than against FaZe, but it's, also not a horrible bet against phase like i like give me the plus one and a half and give me the money line i think rocker can get the job done in 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 in, in any game mode against them really um hard point plus 31 and a half i'll take that um we're getting a little bit of value in the search i'm maybe you could take rocker to win the search but like i i like rocker and hard point this rocker team is legit and hard point this is the first time i think we've ever really seen a really good yeah. rocker hard point team no oh, i you're... mean I, so here, here's what I'll say. We are on opposite sides of this game. Um, I love Rocker. I love that they're 4-0 in the stage. I just think this is too good of an opportunity to buy back into Atlanta to pass up, right? Because we, we just saw Atlanta lose to Optic again. Just kind of like solidifying the fact that they're not the number one team. People 
like want to kind of cheer against phase right we don't want to see phase at the tippy top and they're not anymore and they just lost to optic 3-1 somewhat dominantly you know minnesota is this hot team right now and we see it every week there's a, a new hot team and and this is minnesota's time of the year good for them i will say if we dig deeper into last week's results yes minnesota won both of their matches but it wasn't I wasn't super convinced. Um, so their first match against Toronto, we all know it was a reverse sweep. That's kind of what Minnesota does. You know, it's a win. So we, we got to credit Minnesota for winning all of these reverse sweeps. If you go kind of game by game, you said they are better at hard point or one of the best teams. I wouldn't go that far. They are improving at hard point. But we have to remember they are coming from the basement of hard point teams throughout, you know, stage one, stage two, the pro-am not good at hard point whatsoever. Now they're winning, you know, one hard point, a series, which is that might all, that might be all they need to do to win these series is just take one of the hard points. Cause their search it, you're right is fantastic. And their control is solid. It's, it's getting better for sure. Last week's match against Toronto they split the hard points. They got outscored. If you just look at point differential, um, slightly, it, it was pretty close, but uh, lost by 24 on Bocage, one on Tuscan by 13. And Bocage is a tighter map than Tuscan usually, but that's very, very close. So we'll call that just a dead even split. Uh, you look at the search and destroys Toronto, one in a 6 3, Minnesota, one in a 6 4. So slight edge to Toronto, but again, it's a dead split. And Minnesota did win the control very convincingly, 3-1 on Tuscan. But again, right, we, it's, it's a really close match. So I, that match to me says, okay, Minnesota and Toronto are very close. Like in terms of power rankings or whatever, these two teams are close. One team had to win. And we talked about it last week. Whoever loses that, I said, I still like their outlook for the rest of this stage, for the major. They should be okay. And I still stick with that. I think Toronto is going to be completely fine. Minnesota's other match against Florida, it's a 3-1 victory, which we like to see a little more. Um, but again, hard point, right? Like, they split them. They lose game one, Gavudu. They almost get 100 point clubbed. And Gavudu is not the most blowoutable map, but it's definitely closer to Berlin than it is Bocage, right? But you're st- you, you can't lose that by, what is that, 136 points? Like, they got outscored by more than what they scored. Like, it was bad. Uh, and then they win on Bocage by 49, which is actually a somewhat decent win on Bocage because those games are always close. And then again, a, a 6-4 win in search, a 3-2 win in control. So good win for sure against a, a solid team in Florida. But again, the hard point is, I'm just I'm cautiously optimistic because they might only need to win one out of two all of these series. I just I can't see them winning two ever really. Like their map pool just isn't that deep when it comes to hard point. They have a couple that they're good at. They have a couple that they're bad at. And Atlanta, the the reason for concern with Atlanta right is we just saw them play Optic. They lost both hard points, which was actually a big surprise to me. I thought. Atlanta's far and away the best hardpoint team. You lose a Gavudu by 45. That's actually pretty close for that map. And then you lose a Berlin by almost or 72, which is a little steep. But again, Berlin is the most blowoutable map there is. So that's a little concerning if you're Atlanta. So yeah, maybe the hardpoint are going to be closer than what I think. But when all said and done, I think we have an Atlanta team. That is just, I don't, I don't want to say at the bottom of their market, but trending down in Minnesota, very much trending up. And eventually those, those lines, those curves will again meet. I think Atlanta take out Minnesota in four. Um, I, I do think Minnesota maybe win the search and destroy. Heck, maybe get the control done as well. But I, I kind of think an Atlanta bounce back is coming here. But I'd love to be proven wrong because I love seeing Minnesota win. Yeah, so 
it's an interesting game. I think it's probably one of the better games on the weekend, and I'm I'm really excited for that one. And then now for one of the least exciting games of the weekend, FaZe versus Gorilla. So FaZe does the weird double back-to-back game, which is rare, but it happens sometimes. FaZe minus 2.5, plus 125. Wow. That's... <laughs> You're like, fuck, like what? what it, what's plus 125? 40-ish percent? To, to, to sweep someone. LAG plus 2.5, minus 165. Phase minus 700 on my line. LAG plus 430. Over 3.5, minus 150. Under 3.5, plus 115. God, it's... Uh, this LAG team, I, I've got phase like a 90% chance to win this map. This could easily be a sweep as well, especially if they... if Watch, if they lose to Minnesota, this will be the fastest 3 0. Um. I, I don't know. This is just... This is such a power... Like It's tough. Yeah, yeah LEG is just... like I mean, and this is the thing, right? And you don't want to say that them winning was a fluke. Because it's never fair to say that to a team. But I, I think that there really is an effect here. Actually, I think this is the first time FaZe has played LEG since... Um, since oh god, this is the this is a revenge match. Oh wow, I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah, we're going to bet 3 on this then. <laughs> but no, and I mean, I think... And, and there's a probably re, like I think people say like oh phase just chokes in the, at the phase chokes at the at, when when they play a finals because they're now they've lost two finals this year they lost a bunch of finals last year did win champs though but I think that I think the reason why phase loses these finals is because I think phase just plays at a relatively consistent level all year. and I think that the other teams while like phase has a high ceiling they also have a really high floor. But the other teams have a higher ceiling, but then they have a much lower floor. And I think that when you get a team, like, and again, we, we talked about the one time Toronto beat FaZe, right? That was Major 2 last year, right? That was Toronto going on an insane run that weekend with Insight, right? <clears throat> and now, just a couple, like, last Major, it was LAG going on an insane run with Spart and the Volk, right? And before that, it was Optic going on an insane... And that was literally an insane run. I think that was a loser's bracket run, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, did they make it... To the, no, they did make it winner's bracket. They went 3-0 on the back end of, the, of stage one. But it was, again, that was a pretty crazy run with Optic there, too. So, it's... I, I feel like when... And, like, again, the other times FaZe has lost, they've lost to... Um, they've lost to an Empire team before, and they've lost... They've beaten... Like, they, they all... Well, they did beat um, Subliners, but... I, I think that sometimes it's just these this phase team, I think they have issues at times when the other team just goes on a crazy insane run and they just can't get them out. But through the regular season, man, just like these guys are sharks. You just don't want to go up against the shark. Like it's just it's it's brutal. And yeah, I'm immediately gonna as you talk, I'm gonna go bet this uh minus two and a half. So you, you go ahead. All right. Um yeah, that's interesting because actually we just talked about Minnesota Atlanta. I kind of like Atlanta. This match, I don't know. I'm kind of on the other side, as crazy as that sounds. The one thing I will say with LAG, they're a very good search and destroy team. They have been for basically the entire year. Obviously, they went nuclear at Major 2, and that vaulted them to win that Major. Um but I still I have LAG, even with Gunless, as the better search and destroy team to Atlanta. So I think most likely scenario, this is an Atlanta 3-1 again. So I, I do think Atlanta get a 3-1 over Minnesota and LAG. Um, but yeah, it's weird because Atlanta, I have as underdogs to Minnesota in search. I have them as underdogs to LAG in search, just barely, but still. Um, but I just, I don't see it with LAG winning hard point or control. Um, yeah, and Atlanta is looking to bounce back in a major way after not looking good last week. Uh, they'll have a warm-up game to work with with Minnesota, who is a good team to get a warm-up in game for. Like, all signs point to Atlanta should win this. I don't know about the minus two and a half, though, but um, if you're convinced, yeah, revenge game spot. It's not Spart who took him out. It's gunless now. You know, we're back to the the rosters we saw earlier this year. Like, yeah, it, it very well could be an Atlanta minus two and a half, plus 125, easy, just lock it up ticket. But um, this might just be a stay away for me. Uh, I might consider, like, a hard point spread game one for Atlanta. Might consider that depending on what maps we get. Um, but otherwise, I think 
I, I definitely like this Atlanta game less than the Minnesota one. I'm I'm more convinced that Atlanta should take out Minnesota relatively quickly. This LAG one, I don't know. The price just isn't quite there for me, and I do think LAG is scrappy enough in Search and Destroy. LAG have won their last three Search and Destroys, uh, 6-4, a 6-4, and a 6-5. So nothing super convincing, but, you know, that's that might be what it comes down to is, uh, is a game two. It might go around 11. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you have an Atlanta at plus 125 to get that done, yeah, then then maybe it makes sense. But... Um, this one's more so a stay away for me. But yeah, LAG, they've got a shot, as crazy as it sounds, to make winner's bracket. They obviously need to win this match, uh, which is going to be tough, and they need a lot of other stuff to go their way. But um, they'll be fighting for their lives for sure. Um, but yeah, I I just don't know what to think with LAG. I think Major 2 was an anomaly, right? We had the vote come in, and, and it seemed like LAG was the only team that knew how to use it. And they went on a crazy streak of just search and destroy win and close hard point win just after another, just constantly. And it was like, how is this happening? More so than like, oh my gosh, LAG is very good. So yeah, I have Atlanta as a 79% favorite in this match. Um, so LAG's got a shot, but it's it's going to be tough. It could be interesting. I don't know. I, um... I'll bet on revenge game. I think that's uh, t- hashtag revenge game team. Um, so now moving on to the next match on 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 Saturday here, we've got London versus Toronto. Uh, Ravens plus one and a half, minus one thirty. Uh, Ultra minus one and a half, even or plus one hundred. Ravens plus one sixty seven on the money line. Ultra minus two twenty uh, two twenty on the money line. Over four and a half plus one sixty five, under four and a half minus two twenty. Um, I uh I I like ultra in this game. I don't I don't know what's happening with this London team team honestly. I me neither. I like at times they've looked great, and that they they like last week they thought they were making some improvement against Boston, and they they just got destroyed by. Well, they they actually looked good against Boston, right? Like they they won game one nicely. They were up five nothing in the search. Then they get. Then they get full sailed in the search, and then it's like, oh no! And then they lose the control. I think it was like three one or three zero, and then they get pretty badly blown out in the in the hard point. It's just like, but it's like they were looking so good too. Like I, I had, I had, um, Ravens money line and Ravens spread, and like I, I feel robbed. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were they were a line they were a map uh, like they were a round away in in search from cash. It's six match they sit six map points and they were then i would have cashed the plus one and a half but i was sad i mean i had a good weekend anyways but that that's not the point the point is that like i just don't know what's happening with ravens team like i was full i was all set i was gonna be like cool we're gonna have them at to win the the, the major at 33 to one i'm like i think this team could go on a run obviously they've replaced gizmo which is something we've just not talked about apparently no one is talking about gizmo just not being on this team anymore no real idea why um but you've got Gizmo not being on the team, and then he's been replaced by Harry, who was a team player on Ultra Academy EU. He's been okay. They're starting to get back, like they're starting to get back something. And again, the more they practice, the better they. And they only had one match last week, so we couldn't really see it. They're getting better into form. I, this is a team that I don't necessarily want to like. I would not want to face this team, especially if they're going to be in the losers bracket. Like this team could go on a relatively deep losers bracket run. Um. And and again, this is the thing, right? If it's scrappy, ultra all the way. But if it's not scrappy, I would be a little concerned. I think if it's Insight, Cami, Clean Expanse, this could potentially be closer, right? So, I I'm, this is kind of a stay away. I'm going to see a little bit more from Ultra. Maybe bet on the minus one and a half. But like I I, I bet on that, and like I literally feel like every if I if like I'm I've, if I click on it, um. I just I know that I just know it's gonna it's gonna end badly. Yeah. Um so my numbers say this is a, a straight up coin flip, um fifty fifty each side. If you wanna go to decimals, Toronto is a slight favorite fifty point four percent of the time they win. Um 
and yeah, I think if you take recent results into account, then you have to knock London down a peg further. But again, even with their not so great performances lately, the where the uh, Ra- Ravens team that is, excuse me. Like these two teams are still teams that are in the middle. Like. Yes, Toronto might be better, but I cannot justify laying 220 on a money line, even money to win in four. That seems a little crazy, especially with the Toronto team that, with this roster, has struggled to win hard points this year. Um, So asking them to definitely win one, if not two, is a lot to ask. So I think from a sheer value perspective, London has it. Um... And I don't know, I, I might actually make a play on this. I don't love London long term. I do think there's something up with the roster. I mentioned it before when they had Paul X, they looked amazing. Um, and there was that whole narrative around somebody sign this guy, Paul X. He's amazing. Look at what he's doing on our team. We can't lose. And it's like, why didn't you keep him then, London? Like, oh, you had such a good start to the year, even with Gizmo's, you know, personal issues. You put in Paul X and you keep winning. And the start of the year was so good for them. And I just feel like they've tailed off a little bit. The steam's coming off. Toronto is this team that is interesting, to say the least. They're they're kind of rounding into form, maybe. We'll see if the roster sticks or changes or whatever. But this London team is definitely trending down. You cannot make an argument otherwise. So, yeah, Toronto's play, price is going to be inflated here a little bit. But I actually think wait, because Toronto should take out Paris relatively easily Friday. London does not play before this. The price on Toronto could creep up even more, and then it might be time to strike on London. That might be how I play it. Um, yeah, it's an all-EU battle, so that's fun. Um yeah, I, I just think all these teams in the middle, they're going to have a point in the year where they look like the new hot team. Right now, it's Minnesota. Uh, it was New York for the Pro-Am. Early in the year, London and LA Thieves, even Seattle, Toronto to a point. They were kind of the hot teams that, as we went on throughout the year, we kind of realized, oh, well, they're actually not at the top. They're in the middle of the pack. So, these teams ebb and flow. I think London is starting to hit the bottom of their market. So I, I think I kind of want to buy back into them. Not long term, no futures, no none of that. But asking them to just cover a map and a half in this game against Toronto, I think is a smart move. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my model has this as a 3-1. But like, I just, I just, whenever... Toronto plays London. It just bad things happen. So I'm I'm gonna probably pass on that one. Um, next up we've got Thieves versus Breach. Um, Thieves plus one and a half minus two twenty. Breach minus one and a half plus one sixty five. Thieves on the money line plus one hundred five. Breach on the money line minus one thirty five. Over four and a half plus one fifty five. Under four and a half minus two hundred five. I, um, my model actually likes these here, which is weird. And, and I don't, I don't like, I mean, it likes these in the hard points. It likes breach and the respawn, but then it, it thinks thieves can win a game five, which is possible, I guess. I don't know. I, I think thieves have a bounce back. I do worry, but I'll look ahead though, because this is the six o'clock match and the next day they're playing optics. So I don't know if they're going to be able to focus completely on playing Boston, but like, I kind of don't hate the idea of fading Boston. I don't hate that at all. I think this Boston team is a little overvalued at this point. I think this team is kind of slumping a little bit. They're just not as crisp as they were before. I mean, we talk about, we talk about London versus Boston last week. And while obviously Boston won that match, that was not particularly convincing. I mean, outside of the full sale, could have been a 3-0, right? I mean, it, you make a very strong argument that if London wins 6-0 or 6-1 or 6-2, then London has the momentum. They win the map 3, and that's a 3-0, right? And I just... I, 
I, the, see, the thing is, this is the nice thing about the model, because the model sees that. The model is like, oh, this was not a good game for Boston. So I, I um, and then I think Boston then immediately went on to, did they win or lose? No, they, they got swept by phase, right? So the model is really low on Boston right now, and I kind of agree with it. I'm, I'm, I don't like it at this price. I think there's going to be more money coming out on Boston, but like, I would not hate a bet on Thieves against Boston. Um, what are you thinking? Yeah, this game is a pass for me. These lines are pretty spot on compared to my model. I have Boston as a 59% favorite. Uh, the hard points are basically a toss-up, so I think you say Thieves probably win their map pick, Boston probably wins theirs. Um, Surge to Destroy, and I'm curious to know how Thieves are somehow favored in a map 5, because you talk about Surge and Destroy, that's a big mismatch, right? Thieves on the year are 12-21 and 21 in Surge. Um, that's a 36% win percentage that ranks 10th in the league. And yeah, Boston is 19 and 14. Not amazing, but very much ahead of the curve. Above average, 57.6% um, in that regard. So yeah, Surge to me is a, a pretty sizable mismatch in favor of Boston. And then Control, again, should be close. Might come down to the coin flip, but now that we have that third Control map, you know, maybe things even out a little bit, uh, regardless of who wins the coin flip. So it it should be a close series. I see a Boston 3-2 victory. Um, but that being said, these prices are pretty locked in. So I I don't love playing this. I think it's just maybe a wait and see match, see if these prices shift one way or the other really hard. Um, I'm not sure if they will though, because neither of these teams plays earlier in the week. So these prices are probably where they're gonna be, more or less. Um so, yeah, I think it's a pass for me, but a slight lean to Boston, maybe. Um, but, yeah, two teams that are in a rut for sure. Uh, but, again, we have two teams that are definitely middle-of-the-pack teams. So part of me wants to go, well, Thieves have a plus next to their money line price, so that makes sense. At the same time, I do think the search and destroy woes for Thieves at this point, It's I don't know if they're getting fixed. We're this late into the season, and it just has never looked good for them all year. Uh, now, last week, Thieves lost to Seattle in a sweep. There was a little bit of controversy after that match was played that Thieves were playing on a ridiculous ping, which I thought we had fixed that earlier this year with um, the CDL GM came out and said, like, we can kind of manually add ping to both sides to even out the playing field more or less which makes me think like, okay, well, Seattle would have been playing on a somewhat high ping as well, but I don't know. Thieves, whenever teams lose that bad and no one expects it, it always seems like there's some sort of excuse, specifically with internet connection or something along that nature. So yeah, I don't know what to think of the Thieves team. I do think Boston's better. That being said, I don't know who's going to win it. So part of me wants to go Thieves, part of me wants to go Boston. That means it's stay away. <laughs> yeah. Um, next up, subliners versus optic. Subliners plus one and a half, minus one thirty five, minus one and a half, plus one oh five, plus one seventy five on the money line for subliners, minus two thirty for optic, over four and a half, plus one sixty five, under four and a half, minus two twenty. I I like optic here. I kind of think Optic keep the thing is Optic actually kind of need to win this match to get get the first seed, especially if if um, Minnesota beat Phase. And I think they they this one I think this would probably lock in. And then the last match for them against Thieves they might not need. I like Optic here, but I the thing is I do worry about this. I I like Optic minus one and a half, and we'll see if the, like it's already one oh five. I think it was um plus a hundred at the start. Um, nah, it shifted a little bit and on bet three six five, but. I do worry that this gets to desperation time for subliners. And I mean, this subliners team is good, but it's still really, it's a weird, really constructed team. You've got Hydra, you've got Crim six, cool. But then you've got Paul X, who is a good player, but like, then you also got Kismet, who's a good player, but like, they don't really like, it's so weird. This team just feels so mishmashy and stuff. I just, I mean, it's a good team, but I just don't think it's better than Optic. But I just do worry that if this just gets, if, if this subliners team thinks it's desperation time, that they just throw everything and then they can get it to a game five. Um, what do you think? I agree. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, if there's any side to take, I think it is optic. Uh, I don't mind the minus one and a half at yeah even money or better really. That's totally good with me. Um, yeah, the New York team is. You're right. It, it's it's hard to really figure out what they are. They're better than they were, but you know the search and destroy woes for them continue. They struggled earlier this year with Clayster and Neptune on the team. Now they have the new look. They still don't look great at that mode. There are a handful of maps in Hardpoint and in Control that are just unplayable. New York has yet to play Berlin Control, which I still find crazy, but that's telling, you know, like are they that bad at that map that they are it's just an auto veto for them? They're not even willing to try it? Like that's a little concerning. Optic they just they have no weaknesses and they bring in Pro Loot and maybe they got better. And it's like, yeah, this is the first match for them this weekend, one they clearly will need to win. You know, if Minnesota loses, that doesn't matter, right? Optic still need a fourth win on the board, and this is their fourth match. So I like Optic a lot. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's Desperation New York. They're looking for that third win. If they get that third win here, that locks in the winner's bracket. But oof, it's tough, man. Um, yeah, so lean Optic. I don't love it, uh, but that's definitely the side to go with in this match, if you're asking me. Yeah, I I think I got to go Optic. Um, Seattle versus London. Seattle minus 1.5 plus 140. Ravens plus 1.5 minus 185. Surge minus 150 on the money line. Ravens plus 115. Over 4.5 plus 155. Under 4.5 minus 205. I kind of think, that, like, again, this is... If London puts up a fight against Toronto, I could see London winning this map. I mean, I don't match. I don't like... I just, I really don't like, <clears throat> I don't like, like, I'm not a huge fan of the Seattle team. Like, I could, I could definitely see London win this. I don't love the plus 115 we're at right now. This could get up a little higher, this maybe get to 130 by the end of the week. Um, But yeah, I just, I want to see this London team do something. And I think it's time. We might see that next week. What do you think? Yeah. Are you on, are you kind of like yeah, it... waiting on London for me or with me or what? Kind of, yeah. I, I do see a little bit of value on London in this match as well. Um, now, the matches that lead up to this might swing things the other direction. But, yeah, I mean, we're looking at it right now. London are plus 167 versus Toronto and plus 115 versus Seattle. If you think they win a match this weekend, just bet both, right? And and hope one of them catches, if not both. So, um. Yeah, I, I think this is, again, a close to a toss-up game. I have Seattle favorite at 52% of the time. Um, maybe a little more if you're taking in recent results into account, right? Seattle looking okay and London not looking great. So maybe it's closer to a 55-45. But, you know, even still, I kind of like London. I think this price will move depending on what happens with their matches earlier. They both play uh, one earlier in the week, so... Um, we'll see how that Seattle-Florida match goes first. Um, I kind of like Florida in that, so that might drive Seattle's price down. And I also kind of like London against Toronto in their match earlier in the week. So just based on what I like for those matches, I think the best way to go about this is take London now, because um, by the time we get to this match, I, I kind of think it might be closer to a pick em either side. But I don't know. This isn't a match that's super intriguing to me, so I might, again, just stay away from this. But, um, but yeah, if you're going to make me pick, I will slightly side with the Ravens. Yeah, I think this could be another interesting matchup as well. Um, so that's, that's interesting. Second last match of the weekend, Florida versus Boston. Florida minus 1.5 plus 145. Boston plus 1.5 minus 190. Florida on the money line minus 130, Boston even over four and a half plus 155, under four and a half minus 205. It it is so this these it's so weird to me that you have Seattle favorite over Florida, Seattle favorite over like you basically have Seattle like so Seattle three owed thieves last week, then you have Seattle favorite over Florida, thieves like Boston favorite over Florida. 
Thieves favorite over or Boston favorite over Thieves. Then you have Seattle's favorite over London, and then you have Florida favorite over Boston. It's weird because it's basically saying that like Boston is worse than Seattle, basically. That cause if you if you apply that, you say the Seattle's a better team than Boston, and and Thieves obviously, but it's it's weird. Because then you're also saying that like Seattle is better than London. It, it's a weird loop. Like the it, I think the weird thing in there that doesn't make sense is the fact that thieves. I kind of like again from the lines. The lines are kind of weird. My model agrees with these lines. Surprisingly, I actually have or no, sorry, actually, I have thieves over Boston, but then I have Florida over Boston by a lot too. So my model agrees with it. It's just that I think that Florida should be a bigger favorite here, but I suspect money will probably come in on Boston. So. I don't know. I think the play here is Florida, but like, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to make of this Boston team. This might be a stay away. Maybe a couple of map lines here or there, but this one might kind of be a little bit of a stay away for me. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this line is like, this line just seems weird to me. What what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, this line is, I think pretty spot on. Uh, makes sense. This So this is interesting. Florida and Boston throughout the year in my power rankings and how I go about making my power rankings is basically I take every possible matchup for every team and I go, okay, how many teams are you favored over? And if you're favored over 11 teams, that means you're the best team in the game. And if you're favored over 10 teams, that means you're number two and so on and so forth. Florida and Boston all year have just been doing this dance of like, one week, Florida is slightly above Boston. Another week, Boston slightly above Florida. And it's just like they're doing this dance of like they're these teams that are definitely middle of the pack, if not, I think, slightly above average teams. Um, Florida's record wouldn't show that, but I think they're on level with Boston. They're better at different things, right? So hard points I have as basically toss-ups. Boston I have as a 60% favorite in search. Boston's a very good search team. Florida's record in search isn't indicative of how close they keep their search and destroy games. They have a lot of round 11 losses. It's just those will bounce back at some point. So still a 40% underdog. And then control, we've talked about Boston quite a bit. They're getting better, but they're still not great. Florida is a solid control team. So they're a definitive favorite in that mode. We'll see how the veto shake out. When all is said and done, this is a straight up coin flip. So I see no value. Like even Boston at plus a hundred is like that is what it should be. So we'll see. Maybe the odds shift one way or the other if these earlier games, right? If Florida looks good, Boston doesn't in their first games. Maybe the prices diverge there, or vice versa. If Boston looks good and Florida does not, so it might just be a situation like hope that that happens and take the team that didn't look good and hope for the bounce back. But in all likelihood, they'll either both win or both lose their first matches. We'll end up with a price point around what we have here. And it's still a stay away for me. So a fascinating match because I, I don't know if we've seen it yet this year. If we have, I think it's only been one time. Uh, and I want to say Boston did come out on top. So yeah, it's going to be a close game probably, but uh, one that I think I got to stay away from for now. But I'm interested to see who comes out on top because all year my model's been like, eh, Florida one week, and no, actually it's Boston the next week. And it's just like, I don't know, man, these teams are close. So um, if you want to get into the nitty gritty, I have Boston favored 50.1% of the time. So that's how close it is. Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting matchup. I think the play is Florida, but I might I think yeah I think I'm staying away from this one. We'll have to see how the earlier matches of the week shake out. Like if Florida beat Surge and then just immediately bet Florida here, or if Thieves lose to Breach or if beat Breach beat Thieves, I suspect more money should come in on Breach. We might be able to get Flor like it would be weird if money comes in on Surge against Florida, but then money comes in on Florida against Breach. That would be really weird, because they'd basically be saying that they think Surge is a better team than Breach, but I don't know. We've seen weird weird things happen in, in this league, for sure. Um, Last match of the weekend here. Optic versus Thieves. Again, this is probably one of the biggest rivalries in the CDL, honestly. I think Optic Thieves, Optic Phase, 
<laughs> optic almost hate not optic anybody but like optic optic thieves optic phase um this is kind of one of the bigger matchups in in the cdl optic minus one and a half minus 155 my um thieves plus one and a half plus 120 optic money line minus 350 thieves money line plus 255 over three and a half minus 230 under three and a half plus 175 this is again we've seen this so many times this matchup has happened a bunch of times particularly when one team looks really good and one team looks really bad and it is so unpredictable i think and it's always the last game of the weekend too it's always the last game of the weekend i've whenever this matchup happens i always say don't do this bet bitcoin or buy bit bet bitcoin bet bitcoin buy bitcoin same thing basically bitcoin is now massively down so that joke is dying but we'll find a new 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 joke for that instead though but i mean honestly like this game could be 3-0 either way like i think i think the my model has this as a basically optic 3-0 and i might splash something on that just because we're probably getting a pretty good deep we're probably getting a good bet on that actually what is that optic 3-0 is plus 220 that's not bad at all. Um, I might bet that. Maybe bet a couple spreads here or there. But, like, that's it. I'm not, um... I am not, like... Like, here's the thing. I, I, I could bet the 3-0 knowing full well, like, 100%, that Thieves could win this game. And, like, it, like Thieves could win a map, and, like, I would... You'd have to be fine with that, right? And, again, it's obviously going to depend on what we see midweek, too, like, in terms of if Thieves beat Breach, right? Then this line will obviously crash, and then you can get some closing line value, and then you can buy back up as the minus one and a half cheaper, right? So there's obviously lots of different pieces to, to how this could shake out midweek. But I... I don't know. I lean Optic in this. I mean, Optic's probably going to want the 5-0. If, if Minnesota were to beat... Um, if Minnesota were to beat FaZe, I believe they would be 5-0. So then Optic would actually need this match to force some sort of weird tiebreaker thing with Rocker. And I don't even know how that would work. I think Bo I think they'd still have it because they have a lower map count, but they would have to win this match. But then if they don't have to win this match, then all of a sudden they could just start being like, cool, we're going to play like... Uh, I don't even know who what you play against. Like, the, like they're good at basically optics, good at everything, right? Like, there's no like, like before you would say, okay, they'll play them on Gavutu, but like Thieves' Gavutu has plummeted, right? Thieves are now actually kind of bad on Gavutu, and like, okay, maybe Berlin. Well, actually, optics pretty good at Berlin, and Thieves are actually pretty bad at Berlin, right? Like, there's not a map that I could be like, yes, this is the map they'll play, because I I don't know what that map would be, right? So it's it's a hard call. I I, I don't. I think you just I think you have to bet a three oh or a minus one and a half knowing full well that you could just lose instantly. And and you just know you know what going in and you just accept your fate, I think. Is that your thoughts here or do you have any other kind of thoughts on, on this last game before before major three? Yeah, so my main um thinking on this game, right, is it's the last game of the stage. So the seeds for almost every team are gonna be locked in or you're gonna have an idea that like okay, this team can be this seed or this seed, and this team can be here or here or whatever. So Optic, we know at this point, right, they're going to be battling for the number one or two seed, probably, right? It's probably going to be one of those. If Minnesota lose to FaZe, which is the most likely thing to happen in that match, and uh, Optic beat New York, which, again, they're favorites to do so, then... This might not matter for Optic, because again, the tiebreakers are going to be weird, but you're going to have a four-win Optic with one game to play, and then Minnesota is going to be four wins locked in. So this would definitely put them over the top, and you don't have to worry about tiebreakers. I I don't know how you could play Thieves in this game, because um, Thieves might be in a scenario where no matter what they do, they're in loser's bracket. And that's part just because they play breach earlier in the week and our underdogs in that match very well could lose that move to one and three then you have all the teams that are you know in that six seven eight nine seed range they're all going to be done at this point in the day and it might be a scenario where thieves are you know they're locked into the nine ten or eleven seed and they got nothing to play for really so do they hide stuff? Does Optic hide stuff if they have something locked in? I don't know. I just know that I'm more confident Optic are going to be playing for something than Thieves are. So if, 
I don't think I'm going to play this match at all, but if there is a way, I think you're right. I think Optic minus a map and a half, if you want to go full sweep, sure, go for it. Um, I I just I don't know how it's going to be Thieves for me in this game because if Thieves win versus Breach, right, their number's going to be worse in this match because they're definitely going to be fighting for their winner's bracket lives in this game, presumably. So you're going to get a worse price on Thieves then. I don't love Thieves in that match versus Breach anyway. So I don't know. It's going to be a good match, hopefully, this match. You're right, it usually does go pretty quick one way or the other when we think it's a 3-0, it's a 3-2, and vice versa. I just, yeah, I worry about the motivation factor if Thieves really don't have much to play for. But then again, right, you might get a, a weird map set where Optic want to play Thieves on their best maps, and maybe Thieves come out with a win because of that. Um, but I, I tend to side with Optic should win this. And I think it'll be quickly. But if there's a optic match to take this week, I think it's the first one versus New York, 100%. Like, if you're only going to take one optic, take that against New York, and then just let this one play out because this one again might not mean a ton in the end. So that's what I got to say about that. I I also do think we're going to see some thieves money on this. I, I'd be surprised if this line closes here. I think. Even if they lose to Boston, though, like I, I don't. I really don't. You think the bottom falls out? Because it, yeah. I, when thieves go cold, man, so they go really cold. We saw like stage two, didn't they go zero and five? Like, and then they they won a match at the major, and it was like, okay, good job. But I don't know. Like, if thieves got nothing to play for, and optic has you know a one or a two seed in play, like. That's worth it, but again, right? The, the map set might go the other way, so that might even things out. But I, motivation does worry me with this thieves team, and they just might not have it for this match. So, yeah, that's possible. Know. We'll have we'll have to see. I, I mean, this thieves team, like, we'll have to. See, I, I really need to see their performance against Boston, right? To see if they are in this or if they're just out of it, right? And if they're out of yeah. it, then. Then you're just like, cool, okay, we're just gonna blow it in on optic. But if they're if they do something, like if they beat Breach. Then you could. My point is just their price is gonna drop enormously. Mm -hmm. So I think taking this game, right, it's better to just figure out what you like in the Thieves Breach game or in the Optic New York game than it is to try to like extrapolate those results to this match because and then bet this a later. lot a lot can happen yeah between now and this match everything happens between now and this match so mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree with that um all right well uh that is it we have t we have hit a lot of things this week actually in, in just an hour and a half <laughs> that's actually pretty quick for us actually um but no i mean i it's really interesting. There's a lot of interesting storylines for this week specifically. A lot of value in some of these lines. Some of these lines are a bit weird, but obviously we're going to have um, some amazing matchups next week. I, I think at some point Optic is on a collision. Like again, you're looking at teams that have basically clinched winner's bracket, Optic, Minnesota, phase to some degree. I think a lot of these teams are on a collision course. What's going to happen with Scrappy? So actually, I, I did not realize this at the time, but I believe that uh, Ultra NA actually just won. They were first swept in the finals of Challengers Elite. And I think um, Scrappy had 15 kills in map five <laughs> for for the reverse sweep. Wow. I mean, so I, it actually, if they were going to announce it, it would make sense that they would do that after the Challengers Elite tournament. Um, but I mean, how do you at that point? I mean, again, whatever. We can't. We we stop talking about ultra. But like, how can you say no to that at this point? Like, you have to. Yeah, that that I am curious to see what ultra does with their roster for sure. Because I mean, of all the teams in the league, like potential roster moves, Toronto seems to be at the top of the list. Not for reasons that are bad, but for reasons that are good. Right? You have this mm -hmm. scrappy guy who's just insane at this game. So maybe you got to keep them in. But one thing before we go, Robert, I do want to go over the nut scenario that could play out. Yes. Where we have seven, seven teams that finish two and three. 
in this stage. And you need all 10 games to go a specific way, and you need a lot of underdogs to win, and it's probably not going to happen, but the fact that it could is fun. So I'm just going to go uh, in game order and say what needs to happen and why. So first game is Paris Toronto. We need Paris to win that, so that's already a bad start, and you know it's going to die right there with the first match. But Paris needs to beat Toronto because essentially we need Toronto to finish with two wins. So Paris has to get a win over Toronto. Seattle, Florida, for the scenario I played out, Florida needs to win. Uh, Minnesota, Atlanta. Minnesota needs to win because they're already well above two wins. And Atlanta's still sitting at two wins. So so day one, we're cheering for Paris, Florida, Minnesota. Day two, Atlanta, LAG. Again, Atlanta at two wins. We need them to stay right there. LAG come in and beat Atlanta. What a weekend that would be for a FaZe fan. You go 0-2 to, uh, to Minnesota and LAG. London, Toronto, we need London to win. LA Thieves, Boston, we need Thieves to win. New York, Optic, we need Optic to win. And then Sunday, Seattle, London, we need Seattle to win. Florida, Boston, we need Boston to win. And Optic, LA Thieves, we need Optic to win. Yep. So in that scenario, if all of that happens, you're going to have Optic at five wins. You're going to have Minnesota at five wins. So there's going to be some sort of tiebreaker to get the one seed. Then, oh my gosh, you're going to have Seattle at three wins. I don't think, I mean, there's a couple different ways you could play it out, I think, with Seattle's opponents. But the one I have is Seattle is the team that gets to three wins. And then you have... (laughs) <laughs> New York, LA Thieves, Boston Breach, Florida Mutineers, London Royal Ravens, Toronto Ultra, LA Gorillas, and Atlanta Fays all at two wins. And then you have good old Paris Legion at one. And that's how it happens. And I don't know who gets the tiebreakers in that, obviously, but I did the math. There's a one in 100,000 chance that that happens. So it's not going to happen. But the fact that it could means this league maybe needs a little bit of a structure format change. But regardless, can you imagine if that happened? That would I my head would explode, I think. I don't even know how they because, again, it would come down to map count for winners and losers. It has, but it's head to heads first and then it's map count. But then those are going to be tied and it's just going to be like, all right, we're flipping coins to see who gets the six seed or the seven. Seed. Like, yeah crazy i mean it would be it's not gonna happen (laughs) i mean i don't know well that would probably be the to be fair that would be the craziest thing that's happened in the cdl um that'd be the craziest thing that's ever happened ever maybe maybe (laughs) (laughs) it's the craziest thing that's ever happened maybe i mean it would be pretty insane i um i don't know post that on twitter with like the step the steps for all how it would work and then like as they happen we just keep checking them off be like oh my god it's a good idea that's Um, a good idea I mean, the thing of it is you can still have a massive thing. And the problem is it's the way they've designed this. This play-in system is horrible. Like, it makes no sense. Not enough games. It's not enough games. And and the thing of it is it's so frustrating because the Pro-Am Classic, which, by the way, has actually had, even though a, a quote-unquote meaningless tournament, it's actually had more viewers than our current weekly matches are having. So clearly they, that was something good. I Again, the, kind of the month off killed it. And we're by the way, we're also getting another like three to four week break after this major the problem is is the fact that uh like when we saw that it's clear they have the technology we have the technology we could do multiple matches at a given time so why are we not right why is it that we have to play five games in three weeks that's such a like i i again i don't follow league of legends i'm looking at it a little periphery peripherally just to kind of maybe potentially build a model for that one day but like they, on, a, on any given weekend, you play a game a day. On any given weekend. like Not like, okay, one, two weekends out of the three, you have two games. And one weekend, you only have one game. on. Like They play multiple games a weekend. I think they actually play multiple games a day. And, like, okay, their games are shorter, sure. But 
Like, there is no reason why in a th like you cannot like if if we have the technology to do four streams, there is no reason why they can't do at least dual screen like dual streams. And basically, like you like there is no reason why you can't every team can't play every other team for a stage, and then from there you then move on to playoffs or something. Or like maybe even more than that, maybe you play every team twice, a home and away. One time you get to pick them, like one time your team A from map picks, and the time your team B from map picks. Like that would actually be really cool. I'd like that, but. I don't know. And again, maybe the part of this is expansion and part of this is Activision being weird and hopefully that will change when Microsoft fully acquires them, which should be June of next year. And again, some of it is the game because this game is is just got it. There's four there's four hardpoint maps. Like there's not even five hardpoint maps. Like that's the yeah. state of the game. Like that that's literally that's all you have to say about the state of the game. There's only four hardpoint maps. That's the state of the game. And like of those four, two are basically unusable. Well, Tuscan is okay, like, but that's yeah, like, that's like I, I will say the, the game itself is kind of fun to watch. The maps aren't great, and the format isn't great. But I do think the CDL they have definitely tested stuff this year that I think they've learned from and they'll improve on for next year. Just today, we got the artwork for um, the new Modern Warfare Two game that's coming out. I think it's October twenty eighth. So. Yes. A little sooner than when Vanguard came out. That was early November. We're getting about maybe one week sooner. I'm sure we'll get trailers for that, you know, relatively soon. Hopefully, right, we get a trophy system right away. We don't have breakable walls. We'll see if doors make a return. You know, th there's stuff that, like, the old Modern Warfare might just carry into this game a little bit. So that is concerning. But league-wide, format-wide... I think the CDL will continue to make improvements as we get into, you know, next season and hopefully start the season a little sooner too. So, um, yeah. but yeah, the rest of the season, we obviously have this major, major four and champ still, but some large breaks before we get there. Definitely. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, it, it's interesting and we'll, we'll have to see. I, I'm excited. One more thing I will leave us with today is the fact that, and I did not notice at the time, but, um, Major 4, week 1 of Major 4, it starts on June 24th. The launch of Season 4 of Vanguard is June 22nd. So, this is this is absolute last call for London Docks. If you're going to release London Docks or any other World War II map, absolute last call. If we're going to get any expanded map pool, maybe there is a chance that maybe we could have it for the next major maybe maybe hopefully. <laughs> hopefully hopefully like come on guys like come on like we can't like uh, no more bocage heart point please and 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 no more bocage and no more, like even tuscan well is... the thing is you can't take out a heart but we only got four we, we just That's have the to thing, add right? to the map pool so if we get London Docks, we'll probably see less Bocage, but it'll still be there, Robert. Well, th like, this is... Don't you worry. <laughs> I know. I know. We, we can never escape Bocage. Um, we, can, we can only escape Bocage in the future. But no, uh, I mean, like, I mean, if you got if you got London Docks and, like, I don't know, maybe another map that had, a, like, maybe another decent hardpoint map, like Sam Marie Dumont or whatever, maybe? I don't know. That, like, this you... late in the game, though, it, it's tough, too, right? To justify as a developer to, like, add in multiple maps. But we'll see. Maybe it's easier for them to import a map that's already been used. But, again, you just... have to incorporate breakable walls and all this stuff, too. So. I, I mean, I, I, I had heard originally there were rumors that they were working on London Docks. I mean, they, they, I'm, I'm sure the, like, London Docks dot map file is sitting somewhere on their servers. And, like, it, this, I'm assuming Season 4 True. is, like... Maybe the last season of Warzone to be on, like no, not of Warzone of of Mon of of Vanguard it might be or like the second last season because it'd be like June July August. Usually they kind yeah. of wrap it up by then. Like they may not have another season because they might just call it a day. And I don't know. <laughs> oh God, I don't even know what Sledgehammer does. It's just we'll see. We'll we'll get we'll to the see. finish line with yes. Vanguard soon enough. <laughs> All right, we'll get there hopefully soon. All right. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in today, and uh, we will come back to you next week. We're going to have uh, lines for every team to win the major. We'll obviously run our models for, for major simulations, and we'll run all kinds of stuff in terms of um, 
odds to win, our best bets for the for the first round games, then the losers bracket, then what we think will happen in the other rounds. We'll have all of that next week. So so tune in for that. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. So thank you everybody and uh, have a, have a good day.